must be the interest of the country. We can only motivate others to follow these footsteps when we recognize these people nationally. And the Ministry of Information decided to do that. I'm going to read his clearance from the ISCC. And he says, uh, said, uh, said, see, J. Morris, where is he? Where is he? Yes, sir. Stand up. General in the head of him. He used to be one of the deputies, right? Yeah, deputy. At the, the, yeah, the at the one of the civil. Okay. That's what you're right. Yeah. So he, being in charge of finance, knows exactly what is happening with the finances of the place. And you see all the acts of corruption. He sees all the acts of corruption. And rather than embracing him as somebody who's stepping to ensure transparency, you victimize him. And then as he comes back later, after you took him away from his job, suspended him and say, this is why it is. That is why the ICC says. Mr. Morris, the Liberia Anti-Corruption Commission, the ICC presents its compliments and informs you that it has concluded its investigation into allegations of financial improprieties and misapplication of project fuel funded by the World Bank, which was intended for uh, the looting operations as well as the operation of the standby generators at the Liberia World Treatment Plant by the Liberia World Seagull Corporation, that the way you see where he served as Deputy Managing Director of Finance at the time. In view of the foregoing, and for the analysis of the evidences gathered by the investigation, we are pleased to inform you that the investigation formed no criminal liability on your part. Therefore, you have been cleared by the investigation as a case in the case execution team during trial of the case mentioned super on the media rises. Thanks for your cooperation and partnership in the fight against corruption. It's an appreciative role in the fight against corruption. I was victimized when he thought he was stepping his country to combat corrupt practices at the um, the way you see. We have a detailed release here from the LSC which I will not read. Uh, they, because there were reports in the media that the LSCC was no longer interested in those cases, including one that concerned the former managing director, Joanna Kamara. This press release, which I will talk to um, Pamela and his team to multiply and give it to you, you don't have it already, because a release from LSCC, maybe many of you have it already, confirmed that these cases are still going on there, and that Mr. Kamara entered a plea bargain, as you call it, right? When you do that, it means you accept you, the lawyer is here. So, this man did his job. He was punished. He has been clear in our view. He's a national hero. He could be one of our anti corruption side. And we thought to give him his public recognition. Thank you, brother, and congratulations. Keep doing what you can do for the country. I think the water administration being more focused on fighting corruption will have a space for you. Thank you. So just before I call the uh, the minister, and because time is fast spent, two minutes, not more than two minutes. So I will not even say that I'll be standing while you talk. This is only about two minutes. Thank you. Please that told me. Let's step here for you, you want it? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Minister. I'm so excited. And let me recognize the platform first. Um, this has been a tough journey. Really tough. For a young man who wants to see country going forward. Government after government, Liberia has still been the same. So when we came on board, we thought that we would serve well. I'm a very young man. I control and monitor over 30 million dollars. And I said, let us do it the right way so that our country can be better. They got me suspended, ran me out.
out of my office, my family and I have to go through some tough time for more than two years. This June will make me three years on suspension, no pay, no job, and it has been since a tough moment. I want to be grateful to God that we now have a new regime, and it is my belief that this regime will combat corruption in our country. It is my belief, because reports that have been pending for all those years are now coming out, and today I'm proud that I have a clearance, justice has been served. I'm so grateful to God. I want to extend this recognition to my darling wife and family that stood with me. And I want to say, Honorable Minister, thanks for recognizing our good work. We are around. We hope we have the opportunity to serve our country by a special grace.
working in a hazardous and unsafe working uh, environment, work workers in critical working places without insurance, foreign employees working without valid work permit, employees working without contracts or benefits, among, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may know, the Ministry of Labor has two prime responsibilities under the executive law. Collecting revenues from alien work permit fees and regulating the labor sector of Liberia. Even though there are two main regulation, regulations which regulate the terms and conditions of employment in Liberia, namely the Decent Work Act of 2015 and the Civil Service Agency Standing Order, the Decent Work Act with a view of improving the status of employees in Liberia. On our laws, all Liberian citizens shall have equal opportunity for work and employment, regardless of sex, creed, religion, ethnic background, place of origin, or political affiliation. And all shall be entitled to equal pay for equal work. As Minister of Labor, I intend to ensure that this is upheld. Additionally, holding true to our words during our Senate confirmation and our takeover remarks at the Ministry of Labor, I shall ensure that total adherence to every aspect of the labor laws and regulations, including the Decent Work Act of 2015. I want to emphasize the full enforcement of the labor laws and the provision of regulation number 17, which states, it which states that any informal sector employer who employs an alien who work, who work is not in, in possession of a work permit and is not exempted shall pay a fine of $500 for the employer and two hundred fifty dollar for the employee, for the unlawful employee and section four of the same regulation, which also states that any former sector employer who employs an alien who is not in possession of work permit and is not exempted to pay a fine of, of U.S. two thousand dollars for the employer and U.S. $1,000 for the unlawful employee. I must, I must again emphasize that while we wish to encourage the involvement of our foreign businesses and investment friends in our labor economy and, all, and allow them to explore commercial and trading opportunities, we wish to quickly state that the full compliance of our law will not be compromised and that the safety, welfare, and prosperity of our citizens will be our optimal priority. Ours shall be a Liberian first agenda, wherein qualified Liberian citizens will be afforded preferential opportunities as they compete on the job market with our foreign compatriots. We shall ensure that regular routine and non-technical job placement and vacancies at major companies Major companies and other investment entities in our country will be occupied by qualified Liberians or may only be occupied by foreigners if and only if there are no competent and qualified Liberians available after advertisement and by authority of the Ministry of Labor. Let me just a few things outside this special statement that we, we send our team the team went beyond the regular normal duty to, to make sure that information that was relevant to the ministry and to the government were intended. This team went in the uh, where they had a deep mine at the at the at the Bia Mountain, which is almost I think 80 feet below sea level. They were able to go that deep to see some of our Liberians who work on the ground. And, it's, it's, and I will have the deputy minister to give you some first-hand information about that, where you have people working below that level in that depth, and 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 there's no insurance provision for them. And we talk about in the past, we, we in our previous uh, remarks sometimes at the ministry, we said, look, 
People are supposed to have decent work act required that people should be paid for equal work. Equal work for equal pay. Now you have people working below that level. And you have Liberians are being paid $350, but their counterpart with the same job on the ground who are taught they are receiving $3,500. We think this is something that the company, the company we have to do. Look at very, very carefully. We encourage a, a representative of our labor uh, organization that, that represent those workers during their, their, their negotiation for, for form, the, the agreement, normally the collective bargaining agreement. We expect that we will flag this, this kind of condition out to protect our, our Liberian workers. To ensure that if the two, if we have Liberian and another person, the foreigners are doing the same job, they are supposed to receive the same, the same fee. You cannot pay a foreigner doing the same job three thousand five hundred and pay Liberian three hundred and fifty dollars. You have a foreigner perhaps working in the same area there, maybe covered by a hundred percent insurance, but the Liberians are not covered by insurance. We will ensure that these things are corrected. We want to, we, we, we intend to do this in an orderly manner. We, there are no intention to, to disrupt the operation of these concession areas, but we'll go and sit with them and tell them what the law says should be done. That's why we started with Beer Mountain, though there was a crisis situation. We intend to cover all of the major concessions in our country. We intend to go to the Western Cluster. We intend to go to the China Union. We intend to go to East uh, Asylum Metal. Met, met, met we intend to go to the Southeast, where we uh, got kind of GVL and other, other, other concession areas. It's important to also let our people know that maybe we need our, 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 our colleague at the Ministry of uh, at the, the Bureau of Immigration. They need to step up a little bit because most of these, these areas that are brought in from Sierra Leone across the border. The, the deputy minister will let you know that there were several of them who, who were working with our inner work family because they were brought in from the border and taken straight there on our ground or, or to the workplace. There are indications that they are selling gas, they, they are serving gas from gas station when Liberia is supposed to do that. Some of them are doing other, all other simple jobs that Liberia are supposed to do. We are selling this as a warning to all of our investors or partners in progress that Liberian laws must be respected. If you have Liberian doing the same job with foreigner, you have to pay them equally. You can have one receiving less and another receiving more for the same job. No, we will not accept that. And we will take those steps that are necessary. We will not disrupt your, your operation, but the law will be applied. The law will be applied. So we look forward to all of I mean, especially all of our of, of, of the of the of industry in the country. You are workers, once you your person is a foreigner, the requirement we will not say you will not work in Liberia, but there are requirements of the law that must be met. You must first have a resident permit, then you must have a work permit to work in Liberia. You, if you work in Liberia without a work permit, you are violating the law and there are consequences and it will be applied. It will be applied. So we, we call it upon all of our people, they, 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 especially the different industry. We're willing to work along with you. This is a new administration. You know the motto of this, this rescue team, the president always said, love Liberia. And we love Liberia, we should be able to build Liberia. And we can't do that in isolation. We be prepared to work with everybody, but we have to be able to, we have to be able to know that there are laws in our country and those laws should be respected. So we want to command, you know, that this trip we also have uh, among the, the delegation our inspector general. And I'd like to just say a few things about the inspector general before the uh, uh the deputy minister comes to just say a few words to you. There have been, there were some media speculation, oh, the, uh, the inspector general that was appointed at the Minister of uh, Labor was rejected by the minister. That's not the case. We're working with our inspector general. You know, when you in the new environment, there are periods for adjustments. 
So there was some period of adjustment. I think we we now we now adjusted the way that the the we have an excellent working relationship with the with the Inspector General. We like to keep it that way because we as administrator sometimes you gotta make some hard decision. Sometimes the decision you make, air all the employees will not will not love it. But sometimes you come hard and then you bring them closer to you and say, look, this is the way I want for the work. So then no problem with our inspector general is fully integrated in our in our workplace and he's working along with all of our uh, ministers and deputy ministers. So we like to keep it that way. We have we have uh, uh, other other comments we like to make. Basically, is that so the, the the processing, the process of getting a work permit is simple. We now our work permit process at the Ministry of Labor is digitized, such that if you are enrolled for the first time, maybe that's the only time you will have a little bit of processing to go through. But once you have the first uh, uh, work permit, you are in our system. If, if that if that if that permit expires, maybe in, the, in a year's time, we we'll send you an alert to say, look, your work permit has expired. You have to come and renew. So it's not a difficult process. It's not a difficult process. It, it, it's better for you to come by yourself and renew your work permit than to wait for our inspector to come there because they don't compromise. We told them, we we'll give them straight mandate. If you if someone is working without a work permit. You have to bring that to board. So, if you want to avoid from being booked, make sure that your workers have their requisite work permit to work in Liberia. In other countries, when we go there, we abide by the law. When we, when you come here, you abide by our law. Our laws in Liberia must be, should be respected, and we intend to uphold that. And as long as you are, you are working in line with our, with our, our laws, there's no reason to fear. We encourage investment into our country. We know that we are a, a underdeveloped country or a developing country. So we, our arms are open. That's why the president has been very consistent and committed to all of the things he has said he has said he would do. And we look, we will support it at every level that the workers' rights must be respected on that the rescue mission. That all those who work here to who bring the investment will be respected. That part of the rescue mission. So we look forward to our continue working with all of our partners, and we intend to continue to inform the the, uh, the public about what we do at the ministry. And and that means this is a free invitation. Our offices are open, and if you have issue or question about some of the operations at the ministry, come and we'll give you an opportunity to to have a first hand information. I know, and this is this is something I think we need to say something about it. Someone has consistent and one way they have consistently talk about their our digital uh, uh, work permit project that was launched during the past administration. They say, oh, that the project is not good, the project is not good, but we run it in government. Government is continuity. If the past government signed an agreement, we just took over next than three months, we have to be able to respect those agreements. If there are if there are indications that there were the, uh, the, 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 the contract or the project was done fraudulently. They said fraud vitiate or we would move right, right away to deal with it. But if they were done consistent with our law, where the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Finance, and the, 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 the agency responsible did all of the processes that went through PPCC, they, were, they went through international bidding process. We as a government have to be responsible, not to just come and say, okay, oh, because there was another government here, we have we are, we are canceling or setting aside. No, we don't intend to do it. We need to take our time to review whatever document we make on our decks. If required that we take some action, we will not hesitate to do that. But we'll not be moved by somebody's settlement on radio and other things like that. Because we're running a mature government. This is not, uh, we're not, we're not, we're not here like, like uh, student politics or something like that. So people have to understand that we must work in keeping with law. If something is wrong, when you sign an agreement, someone normally there is a provision, you come down and say, look, the contract is subject to review after one year or after two years. 
So you observe all of the things, the mechanism that, that goes into the operation of that, of that agreement. If after the period for review, in the period that the contract uh, reaches and there is a need, sit on the table and talk about it. If you must abandon it in the future, you do it in keeping with law. When you have a, a, a contract executed by government, you don't cancel it by radio. You to cancel an agreement, a special contract signed with government, there is a provision on our constitution that guarantees contract. You don't just jump and, 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 and cancel contract. You must have good reason. You must do thorough uh, investigation. So we, as the Ministry of Labor, have the responsibility to honor the party. Nothing but the right thing. We want to encourage our people, our doors are open. And I'd like to just say, anytime you need to talk to us, we will talk to you. We don't want to shy away from talking to the press. We like to just make sure that whatever you say about the ministry, about ourselves, about the performances of our ministers, must be true and correct. Even though for us as ministers, sometimes we take the brunt. You go and say all oh, all manner of things. Sometimes uh, we have to have a text team because we work in the public space. But in Liberia, we say, look, you can write, you can talk about people, but there are consequences. You take responsibility. So let's just be cautious. Respect government officials. This man went on the radio to say, oh, the government minister is corrupt. He's a disgrace. That's not being, that means the president is just not trained. Because if you have trained journalists, you will not go on radio and talk and talk about a government official in such a manner. There are ways you can disagree with people in a more respectful manner. You can convey your message in a more respectful manner. And I believe that most of the British citizens who listen to this one, they are very respectful. Some of them are very much disrespectful. We hope that we try to change it as we, as we move forward. It's important that the press, the government, work together. We are not enemies. We should be able to work together. Our, the public, our people need to be, need all the information from the government. So the only way we can get the information is by working together, by keeping our doors open. At this, at this point now, I will call in the vice that man, Deputy Minister for Manpower. Minister, before you have Deputy Council, can you just appropriate that you can use your team? What okay. portfolio that means? Let me introduce the team I agree with the Minister. Uh, Mr. Steve Holliver is our Deputy Minister for Manpower and Plan. Please stand this one. Okay. Mr. Barnes is our Assistant Minister for Manpower and Planning. Assistant Minister? Manuel Barnes. Manuel Barnes. Mr. Charles Brown is our Inspector General. Okay. And Mr. Steady Bar is our uh, Chief of Office Staff. We have an excellent team at the Ministry and I'm enjoying my work with them. Thank you very much, Minister. <coughs> Thank you, Minister, and uh, my respect to the Minister of Information and the Deputy. Let me just stand on the existing protocols. Uh, just to give you a little detail on what happens in, in job. On Saturday, March 23, 2024, the team launched a full-scale investigation with a two with the touring of several sections of the mining site, beginning with a visit to the 100 feet underground mining space, review of alien registration document, safety materials, and others. During the investigation, the team met and held fruitful discussions with leadership of the workers' union and the management. As a result of the visit or site visit, the team uncovered and presented the following. For the six Liberian contractors who were on duty as other brand miners that day, the contracting of Liberian employees started in 2021 and some started work between the period of 2000 2021 and 2022 to 2023. 
When the team went underground and interviewed the workers, they were reliable, reliably told that the highest paid Liberian underground makes 360 United States dollars. And that there is absolutely no life insurance for the Liberian workers working in the underground mine. The team obtained a list of 987 non-Liberian workers, of which majority are Turkish. Going through the list submitted, it was discovered that 185 Turkish and other non-Liberian have no work permit while they are on duty in King John. That there are more non-Liberians at the B mountain during job doing jobs that should be strictly for Liberians such as carpentry, weather, electricity, loader, loader operation, warehouse supervisor, etc. In total violation of the regulation number 17, which called for preference for Liberian in workplace. The ministry had requested the management to submit a comprehensive internal payroll to the team for investigation. Out of the 38 counts submitted by the protesters, 13 of which are Liberian related, labor related issues, management have expressed commitment to addressing all 13 counts. However, the ministry in the process site management to further discuss the way forward in the final resolution of these counts. Lastly, that the management of BMMC has failed to adhere to several MOU and collective bargaining agreements signed between it and the workers' union. That based on these violations, the ministry is in the process of imposing fines on the management of BMMC in keeping with the decent work act of 2015. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. That being said, we will now have some left the director of public affairs to entertain questions from the members of the press. Your questions, please. On the issues that were raised here by the team. Led by the Minister of Labor Movement, Minister of Labor. Minister, you will take your seat and just take note of the questions. You will respond to three questions at a time. So, as the queue is being formed, how many you can get started? Thank you. Thank you. Labor and labor related questions. My name is Samson, and we are both from SKTDM, for that sound. So, uh, Question goes to the inspector. I uh, want to know how do you intend to address the issue of foreigners coming in the country working as my while they are going like people of doing the job? Minister, you take down about three questions, then you respond. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Minister. Uh, my name is Roland Seth, and I'm from Fisher on TV. Okay, uh, at most of the workplaces in Liberia, <laughs> okay, at most of the workplaces in Liberia, if you enter there as a buyer or maybe somebody went to interact with the workers there, you will see that they are afraid of their bosses. That maybe if, if that boss is even doing things all of the way, they are afraid that when they boss out, uh, nothing will come from out of it. For example, uh, sometimes where I sit and do business sometimes, you see like one level in the area, you see another labor minister and say inspectors will come and interact with that managing director of that place and just walk out. So anything he wants to do by himself, he just do it on grounds that he got somebody at the labor ministry that he can call and they will compromise his interest over the librarian. So, why are those mechanisms? You people are with your inspectors. 
put it in place so that we can control such time. Thank you very much. Anya Tyler is my name, and I work for Freedom FM. Um, Mr. Minister, I want to know, apart from finding the company for bad legal practice and other things that they have done in violation of our laws, is there any other higher punishment that you can give the institution? Because given the findings that you just read here, we've observed that there are too many things that they have done in violation of our law. And so this company has been all about working in Liberia over the years. In fact, they have money that they invest in and continue to do what they've been doing. So, is there another punishment apart from uh, imposing fine here? Yeah. The minister, the minister responds to the first three questions. <clears throat> okay, I think the first question was uh, foreigner. Who, uh, work, who, who, who work, who work, who do work that are supposed to be done by Liberians. Again, like we've said, that the way we check on that is our inspectors do regular uh, uh, tour of the business facilities. When they discovered, for example, if they saw somebody changing tire, uh, uh, in, the, in the company you have somebody a foreigner changing tire as a job assigned to them, definitely we we'll address it right away. Those are issues that when it comes up, we, we get on the spot, we take some action. Then there was a question of uh, sometimes you if, if, when you when you speak to uh, workers about some labor bad, bad, bad labor practices in their workplace, they have afraid to talk about it because of consequences. Let me give an example not be afraid of any consequences because if, if it is done with the participation of the Ministry of Labor, we will take steps to protect the worker. Then we went to the beer mountain. The decision of the management initially was though all those workers who were involved with the strike action or with the, uh, with the uprising in, in the beer mountain, they have had a mind to have them dismissed. And we took the decision that all of them, none of them should be dismissed. On account of the uh, of the of, of the protest that, that, that they, they participated in, so the management agreed and did not fire any of them. Other than went back to work. So we we'll do the same thing to any sector where you are working. For example, we say look, the minimum wage for Liberian, based on our law, is one hundred and forty-three dollars U.S. If you are paid, if you have been paid in a job for less than one hundred and forty-three dollars. Bring it to our attention of our inspector to bring it to our attention. They can stay there. You talk to the management and say, no, you're paying this much below the minimum wage that required by our law. They should be able to correct it right away. Or, alternatively, we, we, if it is brought officially to, our, uh, to the ministry, we have all of the deputy uh, uh, assistant minister, all of them have this. So, do not be afraid to talk to our inspector of any bad labor practice in your place of work. Uh, the, the question one, uh, someone asked whether there are other punishment besides the fines. Okay, look, we said in the informal sector, if for example you have a store and you allow, uh, you, 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 have a, you have somebody working in your store who is a foreigner and the person does not have a work permit, we'll find the store owner $500 and we'll also find the person who is working without the work permit. Then in the in the former sector, for example, the BB uh, uh, industry or the banking institution, if you allow somebody to work in the former sector without work permit, the person who is working without a work permit will be fined one thousand dollars, and the person who employed the person without a work permit will be fined two thousand US. So this punishment are high enough, and we we in the past perhaps they were not. They will not pursue vigorously. So we intend to do that this time. That's why we're giving all the public the publicity to our people now that do not employ anybody with our work permit. Because if you do, there will be consequences. Minister, you can get with me. We'll take a few questions. Okay. Good afternoon, Minister. Good afternoon. I'm Jerry Sutemi. I, I work for Liberian Teachers of 
I trust that I want to extend my condolences to those individuals that lost their life during the most life. The issue of most life is a significant problem in our country. And I want to appreciate you for the beautiful policy I mentioned of labor. I don't know if it's a president. What is the intent? Do we have any vision that we can drop a policy to stop? I know it occurs for around the world to mitigate or maybe to stop the issue of what's like if people dying across money. Do you have any plan of being there? Thank you. I'm Stevie Ramos and I report for John. Um, I got a few other questions. The first question has to do with uh, the issue of concession in our country has been a disaster. In many one minute. So the the issue of concession agreement being signed in our country is almost like a disaster because on numerous occasions in, in, in other parts of our country you always see citizens who are residing in you know, specific area will always continue to protest against concession companies that are operating in the country. I really don't know whether the Ministry of Labor has a law where uh, whenever the concession agreement are being signed, they have, the Ministry of Labor is also part of it to see the welfare of the citizens or the, those employees how they are being taken care of and I mean why are actually destroying into the agreement that will benefit the the, 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 the the employees that those concession companies will employ in a specific region, right? You take for example the issue of King Job in Bombing County, the Western Crosser, even in Mon Monrovia here, there are a lot of companies, institutions that are working, the employees are not getting their job benefits. I don't really know whether the Ministry of Labor has any impact to make in terms of signing this agreement at the initial stage. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Shakespeare says Siambo, and I report for JT Library Online website. Uh, I want to know uh, in previous time, there is standing on the podium there, we saw Minister Gibson was there and was given all of the policy in terms of mitigating. Uh, there's so many challenges in the labor sector. Today you are here again after a few assessments and you gave me all of these challenges in the labor sector. I want to know what are the new ideas you are bringing on board in order to mitigate so many challenges that our brothers and sisters face throughout the life and life life you are working for people. Secondly, I want to know, uh, there were a few... Uh, 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 Justice across the board. I just want to ask this. One question. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, the Ministry of Labor, I'm not sure, uh, can do much about it, but normally the uh, Ministry of Lands and Mines, of all of these uh, mining areas, they have inspector, they have uh, agent for the Ministry of Lands and Mines that would caution the people not to do certain things. And what I've learned over the years, that other, if it was not occurred during the rainy season, we say it because of water, we, we break them down. But in most cases, people in the mining area will, will dig under, under the, uh, they, they, they do a bit, then they, they, they dig under, and because they are doing it just for, for a labor point of view, if it, if it is not protected, the walls are not protected, it comes down. I believe probably this is why I'm being river sense. But for the most part, those, the ministry responsible to protect again, muscular or correct, Mining practices will be the Ministry of Lands and Mines. And I, I'm sure they listen to this, uh, so they will listen to what we're saying here today. And with what, what has been happening around the country, around the world, they will they have to show they are taking steps to make sure that those are corrected. Now, the, uh, the other one was concession being. Okay, what is being done in standing on concession or agreement to protect workers? But I tell you, normally, 
concession agreements are signed, uh, the, the composition of the team normally would be the interministerial committee for concessions. What is done is, for example, if there is a, a concession agreement that has to do with the uh, granting of some, some uh, say, minimal rights for people to go and, 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 and explore in the mountain in Liberia, that, that ministerial committee, interministerial committee that will, that will participate in that discussion, the, the main person will be the Ministry of Lands and Mines. If it's something that has to do with other investment, you may have the National Investment Commission sitting on our table. And for the most part, they use our decent work act as a guard. Except that sometimes we, if the president sees a fit to say, well, look, maybe the particular ministerial committee will have to second the Minister of Labor, we will be there with the law. But for the most part, for most concessions that you see, the ministry, the affected ministry, the agents of government are those who form part of it to, to negotiate. But we, we always believe that those negotiations will take, take into consideration all of our laws, the mining laws, the labor laws, and all of that. The question of enforcing or upholding those laws is where, that's why you have the different ministry. If, if you have a concession and they are not abiding by the law, by the agreement, that's what will come in for enforcement. That's why we go out with our inspector to see whether they do abide by the, uh, by the, by the, the, the agreement that is, that is signed. That's what we do. And um, what you say, what, what are the new ideas that we're bringing on board at the Ministry of Labor? Well, we're doing many things. In the past, for example, the issue of work permit, well, there was an ordinary booklet that most of our people had. Sometimes they print their own booklet, they go and issue those, those uh, uh, bookers, uh, uh, work permit to people, and the money was never going to government. This time around, we have a program that is that is digitized, and every cent that is paid or against any work permit goes into a consolidated account. So, and we improve it. For example, uh, last year alone, which was the, the first launch of the, pro, of the program, they, they were able to raise something like six point eight million dollars. That was a good news. And from what we're doing right now, some of the new thing we're bringing now is not to get wrong the, the ministry from our offices. We have given straight instructions to all of our ministers. They are going to get out there to make sure that people are, we have to create awareness. We have to create the fact that you cannot operate Liberia against the laws of Liberia. So we will be visiting most of the major concession areas. So that's a new idea. For example, the, the people that went to King George, they went in the, uh, in the, where they the deep mine. Nobody has gone there before. Nobody from the Ministry of Labor has gone there before. This is the first time that we have our minister going in that place. That is a new order. And we intend to do this all around the country. We will run the ministry, not only from the office alone, from the offices alone, we will get out there, we will keep them busy. I told them, all of them to buy a gym tracker, and we intend to keep them busy. All right, uh, how many last thing? Is there any more in within the labor military sector or on the labor cycle of Liberia that if, for example, a foreigner fights or maybe kick a Liberian worker, is there any punishment for them so far? Because we've been seeing it around here for some people sometimes now. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. My name is Kura Thompson and I report for the two independent New York newspaper. 
I want to know what are some of the process involved in the reporting companies that are found violating the labor laws prior to the companies that are found in violation. And secondly, if I have a question. Good afternoon, Mr. Kraft. My name is Bonnie Abbe. I write for the New Abbe newspaper. Uh, this press conference, for honesty, really is, is a special one. And so, particularly, my question is about Blue Mountain. Mr. So Kra, uh, the people in the concession era are all there complaining and protesting. My question is Is the government of Black Blue looking at the agreement or have any plan to review the agreement from Blue Mountain so that it can be that it be improvement and then the cause the issue of protestation? protestation. Is the government having any plan to renegotiate that contract with the people of Amu, the management of Blue Mountain? And lastly, we talked about some questions. Thank you. One question. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Um, uh, someone asked a question whether where a or owner of a company fights or beat upon a Liberian worker. What happened? Whether that is a violation of our law. Yes, that is a violation of our law. If it is properly brought to our attention, there are consequences in the law. And in most cases, those kind of behavior could even lead to the deportation of that of that person, of the, of the foreigner. All you have to do is just bring it out, make it a formal complaint, and there must be evidence that that employer beat on you as an employee. We will take action. We do it in, in, in conjunction with the, with, the, uh, with the commissioner of, of immigration. That is wrong. Okay. The other one is uh, what are the processing reporting labor violation. Well, look, we are conferring. We might have a hotline set up at the Ministry of Labor. So if you went somewhere, you notice any any unfair labor practice or illegal labor practice or practices in any workplace, so that you be able to call and somebody will talk to you. They will take the information down and will follow you up. In the absence of the hotline right now. You will have a right to come by the ministry. We have different sections. We got we got the uh, uh, employment bureau. You have the uh, labor standard. All of the different sections are there. And if you have a problem, that we have somebody to talk to you. That means that we have a list of years. We got the our ministry much more serve the the labor force of our country. So anything, any information that will help us to help to serve you better, we always welcome it. Uh, yeah. Whether the government is thinking about reviewing the BMIT agreement. Well, I, I understand, my understanding is that uh, the, the, this government, the, past, the, the last government, reviewed the agreement a uh, few months to the, uh, to the close of, or to the election, or to the electoral pro or period, that's what I heard. And uh, it is unfortunate that sometimes uh, these things are done by our legislators. Because they are the ones who represent the people. When they go and, and review them, we believe that they should be doing so in the interest of our people. But there are always room. If this government believes that there are things in that agreement that need some further revision, the government has a right to relook at the agreement. It's not a seal. I mean, the agreements in the between government and concession is not a seal. It's not curved in, 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 in rocks to say you can't look at it. If there are glaring irregularities in the agreement and there are, there are, there are provisions that are inconsistent with our law, the government will have the right to review them. I want to do a follow-up, sir. No, no, sir. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you another time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Today, we organize this press conference to hear from the Minister of Labor. I show you don't know the latest development from King John Wayne Cape Mount Mountain. Now, to do a commentary of the 
Ghana. This program has been made to listen to a team member from the Ministry of Labor talking about the company has conceded to implementing 13 of the 37 count that were put forward by the protesters. That is a laudable development. Uh, you see, family men abandoning the comfort of their home, going 100 feet below the surface of the earth, just to investigate by this a sacrifice, an immeasurable sacrifice in the service of our country. And we'd like to, on behalf of the, the Ministry of Information, Cultural Affairs and Tourism, extend thanks and appreciation to Minister Kobo Kra and his team for the initial engagement with the King George situation. We also like to applaud the visionary leadership of His Excellency Ambassador Joseph Ibaguaka, who, on the onset of the violent situation in Grand Cape Man County, set up an interministerial committee on concession to make an immediate intervention. And as you can see now, issues that were raised by citizens of Liberia in that area are gradually being resolved. We'd like to commend the ministry and also request them to go further beyond what they have done because we all know that labor issue concerns everybody in Liberia. Uh, our citizen deserves to work in a very conducive and humane environment. It is absolutely unacceptable when you read accounts they are by the protesters who are Liberian citizens. It is unacceptable. So we commend you, Mr. Minister, the team. I, uh, you know that the national budget is currently before the national legislature. The president, His Excellency, uh, President Guaga, has recalled the legislature. They're going to be returning. I, uh, I'm told on the first of April for 30 days, and I. Uh, so the budget before the legislature, there are a lot of issues, there are running arguments. And so tomorrow, at the same time, the Minister of Finance and Development Planning is going to be here with his team. We encourage our friends in the media to be here as early as 10 o'clock to put their guidance in place so that we can be able to hear from the, the Minister of the team. I uh, want to inform the decision about some of the very significant cuts. For example, in the last budget year, you see the Ministry of State 22 million, from 22 million to 9 million. You see massive increment in allotment to the health and education sector, which is a lot of work. So the Ministry, the ministry is going to be here tomorrow to talk about it, and we look forward to seeing all of you here. As always, we do appreciate your presence. You come here to compliment the work that we do at the Ministry of Information. It is through your medium that the Liberian people are able to, to, to follow comprehensively the work that we do here. Okay, so we have an overview of the economy tomorrow when the Minister of Finance appears. We have an overview of the economy, the economy inherited from the, the past regime. We also have him talk about the current status of the economy. The budget, as I mentioned initially, uh, the last government domestic debt was an issue. They failed to disclose the payment list of domestic debt. So the minister is going to be talking about it tomorrow. Domestic revenue projection, uh, constrained revenue generation as well, extended short, an extended infinite, uh, revenue envelope, expansion, analysis, a key sector and benefit of the early passage of the national budget. Those are points that the minister is going to be talking about tomorrow. So look forward to you being here to ask the hard question uh, in the interest of our dear country. Thank you again for coming, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We will now all be seated as the minister and team will be escorted out of the hall. Thank you. Our books are ready here at the Ministry of Information, Culture, and Tourism. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following us. Always keep following us online. My name is Wise Williams. This is our to open it up to this edition of the special press briefing. Thanks for calling.